guys, this is Jake from the Goose Honk. I'm joined today with my man, Ian McPotland. Good afternoon, guys. And today we're gonna to talk about fishing inlets. Um, you guys sent us some great questions, so we're gonna kind of run through a couple here. This man right here, if he's not in the shop, he's out fishing, whether it's from kayak, from shore, always out there. Facts, facts. I'm not here, I'm out there. So we're gonna start off with kind of explaining what really is an inlet. Hmm. So I would say what categorizes an inlet for me is really like an entryway to like a bay or um, just really like an indentation and in like any two forms of like a beach, um, which would put it in like an inlet stage, you know, for me. Yeah, so there's a lot of water flowing mm -hmm. in these inlets, um, usually into a big piece of water. That's what makes it so, you know, tempting for the fish to be lurking there. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of people were asking us what type of tides are we going to be looking for in these inlets to fish? So I generally, and this is a generalization, um, I like a dropping tide. So if you've got a high tide, maybe let's say five o'clock in the afternoon, we all get out of work. Um, probably an hour to an hour and a half after that is going to yeah. start going out, which is um, when I would try to uh, be on location there, you know? Okay, sweet, sweet. Now, it's important in these inlets to look for structure. Mm. You know, we had a lot of questions on structure, how to find it, how to fish it, you know, kind of get the people on. Yeah, I for. would, um, you know, you're looking for skinny to water to pick up any kind of bottom structure. So okay. definitely going at low tide, you know, the same theory that I would take to just uh, attacking like an open beach, um, just scoping it out of like a low tide, um, definitely not going at night for your first time, um, just so you can actually see what you're working with here. Yeah, it is one of my favorite times, especially now in the winter months. Mm -hmm. Take the dogs for a walk on a beach. I'm always dropping pins on my phone if yep. I see a nice little break or something like that. Absolutely. Definitely helps. Now, where should we focus casts in the inlets? Um, so every one is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to, number one, I'll say Google Earth is your biggest friend, it's your biggest ally. Um, it's going to give you the aerial view of pretty much anything you're looking at. Um, and generally you can pick up on those sandbars, you can pick up on those ridges um, from the aerial view from Google Earth. It's definitely going to help you out big time. I would, um, I would try to find any ebb. So the, the stripers in general are pretty much any predator fish in salt water is going to be like an ambush predator. So I'm going to look for a spot where they can stage in probably a little bit slower working water um, and just try to put my lure in like a location where they're going to be striking it. Okay, sweet. Now that leads us to signs of fish. Uh, we mm -hmm. all know birds and what have you, mm -hmm. but uh, what else are we looking for? Um, I would look for any little bait fish running on the shore. If they're getting pushed in in any good amount of numbers, it's probably a reason for it. Um, the stripers are probably um, pushing them up against the beach or in any of these little inlets where you find like a, like a seep drop off. You know, they'll push them right up against the drop and kind of won't give them any place to run. Well, now you mentioned bait being pushed up on some mm. shore. Um, let's talk about matching the bait with the lures. What are we that is for about? sure. Okay, so this is like a couple of my little goodies in the bag up there. Um, I always say, if you see me in the shop, bucktails is like building a, a house on a solid foundation. Um, if you can fish these well, not only are the cast great, but it's just um, it's a it's a great lure to start with. Um, they're very simple. It's great for catch and release with a single hook on here. Um, and it just imitates a wide variety of small bait fish, whether it's peanut bunker, small sand eels, you know, you can go up to a bigger size, get more in like the three ounce range and yep. get a mackerel in there, your pogies. Um, it just covers everything. So uh, I feel like, you know, most masters master the bucktail first. So is that your first lure out the bag or it's, something else? I, I would say, if it's not my first lure out the bag, I definitely throw it every single time I go fishing. Okay. I li literally say every single time I'm pulling out a bucktail at some point. Um, I hate to beat SP minnows to a death because everybody fishes them, but uh, as anybody that knows me very well, knows that I pretty much throw an SP as my first lure. This is the uh, Senorita color, as you can tell. Uh, she's been beat up Beating pretty up, good. For, sure. um, for good reason, it works great. Uh, color is something I don't super get hung up on, but I do feel like gold, yellow, red, dark, um, got nice high quality owner split rings. They're a little rusty because it's been sitting in my tray for a couple months, 
but these BKK hooks are absolutely incredible. Um, all my go-to lures have BKKs on them. I swear by them. Can't recommend them enough. Can't beat them. Can't. And uh, obviously everybody knows SPs cast like a mile. Um, so, and they're working about three feet deep. So most of our inlets around here, it's going to be a pretty effective lure to be throwing. And along with the price the point too. Not, yeah. not going to break the bank. Nine bucks. Sure. Um, I would definitely recommend upgrading the hooks, but uh, they they impart the action all by the lips. So if we don't have to do too, too, too much. Um, I highly recommend an extremely slow retrieve. When you think you're retrieving slow enough, you're not retrieving slow enough. Okay. Like dead stopped almost. Personal favorite of mine here. Ooh. Maybe a little bit bigger, but for schoolies, mm. it's hard to beat this maybe an epoxy or something, but yeah. the little savage eel. Yep. Caught so many fish on this this year, ranging, you know, all the way up to the seven and a half inch, I believe. Yeah. You can't beat those things. Solid hook, you know. Every Again, color imaginable. Good for catch and release, just that one hook. Mm. You know, if we do see the birds working, like Jake was saying, um, top wire. Gotta love, everybody loves the top wire blow up. This is a good old fashioned cotton cordel. Um, again, they're rusty hooks, but they're upgraded. Uh, love the action, love the rattles on these things. They cast a mile. And, you know, if you have a 20 pound bluefish or a 30 pound striper blow up on one of these things, it's, nothing gets a pump in. It's hard to beat, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, which one? Out of them all, I got a question here from mm. the Nate Dog Stack. Ooh. Nate Dog Stack, sorry. What is the best lure for inshore stripers? That's a tough one. Oh my god, that's like choosing kids for me. <laughs> it's uh, it's tough. Uh, I'm gonna go bucktail. Okay. I'm gonna go bucktail. It's a tough decision. That's not an easy one for me to choose, but um, practice what you peach, and I do believe that. Uh, Bucktail is probably the number one lure for inshore stripers or just stripers in general. Okay. Now, another question is, you know, this Savage Gear comes pre-rigged, that's nice and all, but mm -hmm. what size jig head would you usually use, let's say using a Sluggo, a Ron Z, what have yep. you? Yep. Um, for generally like inshore fishing, I toggle between an ounce. Um, I will go down to like three quarter, but an ounce to an ounce and a half is generally what I use. Okay. 90% of the time, it'll probably be an ounce. All right, beautiful. Yep. What about all conditions? I mean, right here, you know, I would probably say a lure for all conditions. Hmm. I'm probably tossing like a five five dot spin, inshore that is. Mm -hmm. You know, not off the, the outer beaches and all that. But yep. A little dot spin kind of matches the hash. Yeah, and that's the other thing. So running a trailer on these bucktails will give you a lot of action on a slow steady retrieve. Like I said, uh, I don't impart a lot of twitches. Um, I just like to have a slow steady and having the dart spin with the blade on the back is going to impart a lot of action without imparting a lot of action. Um, so I do generally run a trailer on the back of my bucktail stick. Okay, yeah, sweet. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, what about rods? Nice inshore, creek mm. rod. What are we talking about? I mean, honestly, um, if you really want to be sporty with it, you know, you could go down to like a seven foot medium, throwing like some of the smaller plugs, like soft plastics, like you said, like the lighter Savage, yeah. Savage gears, that kind of stuff. Um, up to probably like an eight foot rod is okay. kind of like where I would, um, I feel like nine foot is kind of going into full surf, yeah, definitely, you know? For sure. Uh, but I use a lot of like seven, six, like right around that mm -hmm. mark. Um, similar to like what you would use for maybe like a heavier duty Albi setup, you know? Okay. I think yeah, that's yeah, nice. Sure. I like having a short butt too, short. Okay, short, not split butt? <sighs> I mean, I feel like that's kind of like, it can be kind of repetitive because the splits generally end up being a little on the snippy side, okay. but um, I generally just don't like the, the butt of the rod to go past my elbow. Makes sense. I, I like feel it. like it works works a little bit easier for working some of these top butter plugs and just Beautiful. in general. Now, a good one here, I know seals have been affecting a lot of fishing on the Cape. Hmm. Well, how do they affect inlets? Um, obviously, you know, the seals are gonna stick around because the bait's around because the fish are there. Um, We've all gotten, um, I don't want to say tax man because it's a shark guy, but you know, we've all gotten a couple of take in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, sure. They're a byproduct, you know. Uh, we have an amazing fishery here, and you know, seals are going to come because I said, because you got bait, because you got stripers, you got mackerel, you got pogies. Um, it's an ecosystem of itself. You know, I, I know people feel a little bit salty about the seals, but. I feel like it's it's just part of the Cape here, you know. Um, sure. We gotta we gotta fish around them. 
there, I do fish a couple of inlets where on a regular basis I'll have them be there, but on a regular basis still catch fish. So for sure, yeah, you definitely work around in most inlets. Yeah, so if there's yeah. The water's running to you. Can and I don't want to just um, donate lots of our schoolie stripers to seals as far as releasing or getting them into the beach. Um, if I do run into an instance where maybe I've got seals in my inlet, I would maybe run a little bit more aggressive drag to get the fish in quicker, mm -hmm. um, to get a safe release on them so the seals don't just, you know, run amok with you. Yeah, for sure. All right, so that's it today. You know, we've been talking for a little bit here about fishing the inlets. Um, we got more questions about, you know, kayak fishing in the open ocean. We got fly fishing. We're gonna definitely address those in later videos here. Absolutely. So thank you for stopping by. We appreciate it. It's been Jake and Ian. Signing off.